In the next part of this tutorial, we're going to look at making the rail mount onto which the sniper scope sits. And we're going to do this just by again creating another shape that's going to make this um, this rail here. And we'll extrude that along and then we'll start to sort of build up from there. So without further ado, let's turn this to a maximum viewport size and we'll start with a line. Again, I prefer my initial type and my drag type to be set as being linear. I just feel it's easier to control. Again, I'm controlling the, constraining the, the line here uh, by pressing the shift key. And I'm not panicking too much about making sure it's perfect at the moment. There we go, that'll do. Because as soon as I've done it, I'm going to come in and start to move things around a little bit. So, no problems there. Don't know what that one's doing there. We'll, um, I think we'll just delete that line. There we go. And again, I'm not being particularly precious about whether this is exact or not. I just want something there at the moment. Okay, I think we'll probably no. I think we'll probably say a bit of a do. Um, we'll turn these to be Bezier corners. And we'll make these Bezier. There we go. So all I'm doing here is just creating the little rails at the top here and how they're going to sit on the rifle and these are just sort of adjustments it, it, it's sort of almost like random greeble detail at this point there's no need to sort of be too precious about what you're showing you've just got to put something in there to make it look as if there's a bit more detail in and uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just fill at these two corners there we go, and we'll fill it that one. And we'll fill it that one. So, coming back to our 3D view here, we're going to extrude this out a little way. And we'll bring it back so it sits roughly somewhere in the middle there. There we go. I'll right click and I'll make this an editable polygon and we'll make sure that the pivot point is right in the center of the object. And that is going to make our job lining it up a jolly sight easier. Okay, so not massively exciting at the moment. We've just really got something that's sort of resting on there. Uh, that's fine. We'll move that down fractionally. We've also got another section that sits inside there, which is going to be handy because what I'll do from this is I'll probably say, right, let's take this polygon and we'll extrude it up. Let's just have a little bit of fun with this. We'll say we're going to extrude it there. If we pull our grid up, this is where the grid comes in useful. So I can always just drag these points around until they meet where I want them to. And we now know that's all in line, so that's good. From here, we can, of course, Level up and out. And that looks a little bit drastic from where we're sitting at the moment, but all we're going to do is just very, very gently give this something to intersect into the body of the, uh, the scope. And there we have. That's good. Again, we've got problems with this, but this is this can become a non-issue very, very quickly. We've intersected inside the main body of the 
scope, which is something I obviously didn't want to do before. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select my edges, select two different sets of edges there, and I'm going to use the connect tool. And we'll collect connect, we'll say three times, three times, there we go. Okay. And each time I'll just drag this down so that it doesn't intersect any longer. That's working quite well. I can now come in and select more edges. Again, let's just take that down. And once we've done gone this far, we'll then look at it in wireframe and we'll make a decision and say how much more we can reduce this by. So yes, I think that's fine. I think what I can do with this is just take all of these vertices and just pull them down so they no longer intersect with the inside of the scope. But what we do get is a nice intersection. There we go, that's looking good. Now, I don't necessarily want the slide to intersect with this, this sort of insert on the, uh, on the scope. So I'm going to move it slightly. And for the sake of poetic license, I'm going to move it into the middle of there. As I'm going to move this to sit just on top. So it's all in line. Now I realise that's not in line with the main picture, uh, but this was a very rough picture that we're using, and I think poetically it will look better if we do it like that. Uh, let's just unhide all, so we've got the end there. Yep, that's good. Okay. So what I can now do is I can now start to look at this object and say, well, what I'd also like to do is just create a couple of cut marks. One there, one there, one there, one there, and we'll do the same over on the other side. Not really bothered about these being straight to start with, because lo and behold, I can... Now you can be more accurate than this if you want to, obviously. Um, but again, because I'm employing a certain amount of poetic license on this, there we go. And I'll take each one of these and I'll inset. And then I'll just do a slight bevel out. I think possibly even use the settings for the bevel just to make sure that I do get only a slight amount. And that's obviously way over what we want. And I'll just put a little bevel in there as well. I think the only problem is with this is we're going to get some crossover there. So in actual fact, we might just stay with what we've got here and just pull that out a little bit further. And again, on this side, just insert. You can always use the settings, if, if, as I was unsure there, as to how far in I'd inset on the other side. By using the settings, you've got that 0 0.396 was exactly what I had before. So that's quite cool. That works quite well. And again, I'll do the same with the extrusion. And then looking at the side here, I'll create a geosphere. I'll do it from the center and I'll make it a hemisphere. And we'll drag these out. Oh, bless. When we drag them out the correct way around, there we go. Job done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squish it down because I don't necessarily want it to be perfect. And I'm just going to Mount that here. We're going to shift and drag. Make a copy there. 
So make rotational copies around 180 degrees. There you go, that saved us having to do a mirror. By saving us having to do a mirror, we don't have to worry about any of the transforms being messed up later on. Okay, that's all looking good. So I guess if I want to now, what I can do is just come in and select some of these edges. And what we'll probably do is just do a couple of chamfers to start with. Just to sort of soften the edges here a little bit. There we go, that works. And I think we'll put some chamfers on here as well. Just very fractionally soften those edges up. That's looking good. And again, all the way around here, just to soften these edges off. nothing drastic we can then just select that whole unit and we'll apply our grayscale grayscale material to it and there we have very quickly and very easily built is our rail slide of course don't forget with this select all the polygons because we did make this in various different stages and make sure you've got also smooth done there we go So we're beginning to build this up a little bit more now. We've got the sniper scope, we've got the toggle at the top. Again, you can change any of this that you want, really. Uh, and it's starting to take shape now. It's starting to look a lot, lot more detailed. Let's just get into that. So in the next section of our tutorials, what we'll do is we'll start building the rifle proper. And I think what we'll probably do is we'll start at the barrel end and we'll build the barrel and then possibly we'll build, we'll build a magazine and what this will do is this will help give us a sort of a placement for how the rest of the gun is going to look and feel so we start adding the little bits of detail in that we can see and then we build up from there <laughs>